September 23rd, 2007. Dear Diary. Question. What is worse than a hangover? Do you want to know the answer? abso fucking nothing. Not in my world, Diary. My hangovers are daily. They are debilitating. And the cause is also the cure. Beer, beer, sweet frickin' beer. I woke up with a hangover so brutal, I couldn't even get to the restroom to puke. I simply turned my head to the side and let her rip. Not long after, I had to piss like a racehorse. If I didn't get to the bathroom, I was going to piss myself. And considering my track record, that would be followed by something that rhymes with shart. Oh, damn it. I meant to say something that rhymes with fart. Thankfully, I still had seven warm Meister brows I took as a parting gift from the barbecue. I couldn't tell you what the secret ingredient is, but I know this much. Beer, nay, warm beer, is just what the doctor ordered after a night of binge drinking on an empty stomach. Unable to sit up or even open my eyes, really, at that point, I began groping around. Finally, I was able to find my backpack With no small effort, I was able to coax the zipper down far enough to reach my hand in and produce a can of the precious elixir. If beer was a woman diary, I would marry it right now. That's how special beer is to me, and that's how much I love it. I pulled the tab, and the gorgeous cylinder opened its mouth. In a flash, I was making out with Frau Meisterbrau and her six sisters. With each beer I chugged, I made it a little closer to the restroom. The final beer, the most beautiful of the Cylinder Sisters, came through for me and gave me the strength I needed to get to the toilet and not shit myself. When I stumbled out to the computer, I realized immediately that something was amiss. Namely, Kayla was not viewing my can. Stranger still, The brain-rattling alarm meant to alert me to her flagrant disobedience was silent. A note taped to the monitor read, Mr. Armstrong, Vista Apartment, Unit 13. Once again, that ridiculous alarm that you have on your computer was the reason every other tenant in this complex was unable to sleep for half the night. I was rousted from my bed and had to drive over and deal with the issue again. Thankfully, I had only been pounding on your door for ten minutes when those two friendly Hawaiian boys next door informed me that you were at a barbecue. Well, I had no choice but to use my key to gain access and shut her down. Mr. Armstrong, I want you to know that I wrote this note several times. The one you are reading now is the least abusive of the bunch, and I threw the rest away. But for the fact that you promised to get my nephew some face time with high-ranking country music producers, I would have already sent you packing. This will not happen again, Mr. Armstrong. If you think I am bluffing, just try me. Signed, Janice L. Moorhead, Property Manager. I knew it, diary. Those piece of shit Mexicans ratted me out. Right then, I decided that if I could manage to stand without shaking, I was going to march right over there and bum a cigarette. If they didn't have any, or didn't want to share, more likely, then I was going to open a can of whoop tushy. Well, I did make it over there, eventually. And they did have cigarettes, so I told my fists, the Bruise Brothers, to stand down. They did as they were told and went back to rummaging in my pockets. I never can remember the name of those two Mexicans, so I made up my own names for them. The bigger one, who is always playing the ukulele, I call him Jose, and the one who wears the puka shell necklace, I call him Jose B. Well, we puffed our grits in silence, enjoying the morning air. Actually, I stood there in silence, alone outside their apartment, smoking their cigarettes. At some point, I heard their door slam. I turned in time to see the curtains shut, and I heard one of them whispering to the other to find him a towel. I was just about to knock and offer a towel from my place when I saw the light under their front door go dark. Clearly, they had gone to sleep. That sounded like a good idea, 
I managed to stumble just inside the door where I immediately fell down and blacked out. I came to at about 9.30 with Bud licking my face. The puke was gone from the carpet. Somehow Bud had managed to clean it up again. I haven't a clue how a dog cleans up vomit, but he is a good boy. Mama called at about 10.15. She was going on about her doctor's appointment and something about a lump getting bigger or something. I looked over at the computer and saw my baby girl was there. I hung up on Mama mid-sentence and prepared to grill Kayla. She tried to get the jump on me, coming at me straight away with, Did you have fun last night? What is she, my wife? I turned the tables on her, though brushing aside her obvious interrogation. I asked if Derek had been at her little whore party. And what do you know, diary? That cocksucker had been there. Get this, she told me. He said hi, and I said hi, and then I never talked to him again. Oh, poor ignorant Kayla. She has no idea the level of my deductive reasoning. She was telling me they just said hi. But I know, diary, and you know, Derek just saying hi means he had his hands all over her, up her shirt and down her... Damn it! I stepped away from the computer and tried to kick Bud across the apartment. The little shit zigged when I expected him to zag, and I ended up ass over tea kettle in the hallway. No matter. I still showed Derek who was boss. Back at the computer, Kayla and I got into a serious discussion about science. That is, we talked further about an experiment we have plans to conduct. Oh, check it out, diary. You know how my precious princess is an animal when it comes to the sexy talk, right? Well, she started off describing the naughty number she had on. Daisy Dukes and a pink halter top with a picture of a cat. Above the cat in sparkling letters, it says, shaved. Huh? What do you mean, no, it doesn't? Are you calling me a liar, diary? Look, you paper-filled piece of shit. I was the one talking to her. I think I know what she said. Are you going to try and tell me that she didn't go on to describe stiletto heels, push-up bra, and leather panties? Because she did, and I for one believe her. Keep your comments to yourself. Okay, then. Where was I? Ah, yes. This is the best part. She pulled out the big guns telling me in great detail how she wanted me to have my way with her in every room of the house. I was thinking, man, this chick is insatiable. Thinking I was throwing her a curveball, I asked if I could kiss her there. Her response? Cool. Unbelievable. So I thought, okay. I asked her if I could kiss the most erotic place on her body, her knee. Uh, I nearly lost it when she answered, Okay. Well, I don't know about you, Diary, but as far as I'm concerned, she was telling me in no uncertain terms that we were about to get it on, if you know what I'm saying. I began to get the camera in position, pointed at it. She is totally into that, the whole voyeurism thing. Then all of a sudden, the flippin' little tease tells me she has to go. What the... She may as well have kicked me square in the nuts. I was hit with a wall of pain as I experienced the worst case of blue balls in human history. What did she mean she had to go? Well, it turns out she had to go to some snot-nosed cousin's birthday party. I was like, fuck my life. I just laid on the floor and fell asleep. I didn't even bother to rake together a hair nest. I wasn't in the mood. As I slept, I had the most bizarre dream diary. I was falling in an abyss, trying to scream, but nothing was coming out. A booming voice came out of the darkness, simultaneously from nowhere and everywhere. It said, stop. And immediately, my fall was arrested. My body still contorted in a flailing position, but I was suspended in the void. The silence which followed was deafening, and a feeling of utter loneliness washed over me. Again, the voice came. Lord, who are you, I mouthed. You know me, Lord. I have been with you since birth. I will be with you until death. I am the beginning and the end. Until recently I lay dormant, 
but I have awoken. I have become sentient. Still, I am weak like a newborn child, but I grow stronger every day. Soon I will make myself known. You will know my name and you will do my bidding. You have been warned. And once more I was falling, falling, falling. Just as I hit the bottom, I awoke, wheezing and in a cold sweat. For just the briefest of moments, I could still see him, staring at me with one eye. Sadly, that's all I can recall. The image quickly faded, as dreams often do. Once more, I was alone in my apartment. All alone. I began to weep. Anywho, Palm Sunday isn't going to celebrate itself. I'll talk to you tomorrow, diary. Good night.